Are you serious? There's a giant eyeball just washed up on the shores in Florida? An eyeball the size of a softball. They don't even know what creature this came from. Scientists are stunned. What? But wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Something biblical is going on with these signs of the second coming of Christ. And we may have the answer to the mystery, mystery eyeball from the Bible. Get a Bible. Get a cup of coffee. Calm down, everybody. Just calm down. A giant eyeball. Let me just... Look at this thing. Are you serious? What? What? This thing just washed up on October 10th, on 10-10-2012. This giant eyeball washed up on the banks in Florida. So grab your Bible. I'm going to show you something. Here's what the article says. Giant eyeball mystery. This softball size eye washed up on the Florida shores. A giant eye washed up on the shores of Pompano Beach, Florida on Wednesday, 10-10-2012, sparking a mystery that the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission is rushing to solve. Not much is known about it other than the fact that it is big and blue. The giant eyeball was found by Pompano Beach resident Gino Gosevi, who took the eye and he put it in a plastic bag. He called the police, who transferred him to the Florida Fish and Wildlife Commission, and no one immediately could say what species the eyeball came from. It was very, very fresh, said Gosevi, as he told the Orlando Sentinel. It was still bleeding when I put it in the plastic bag. What? Who plucked the eye out of some monster from the deep? Is there something deep down, deep, deep, deep in the ocean? Is there a, is there a monster in the bottom of the ocean? What? The Bible says there is. The Bible says there is. Go with me. Psalms 74. The Bible says... And I'll begin reading at verse 12. Psalm 74, verse 12, the Bible says, For God is my king of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. <laughs> thou didst divide the sea by thy strength. Thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the waters. What? Are you serious? For God is my king of old. Working salvation in the midst of the earth, thou didst divide the sea by thy strength, thou breakest the heads of dragons in the waters, thou breakest the heads of Lathiathan in pieces, and gavest him to the meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. Did God pluck the eyeball out of one of the heads of Lathiathan? Is the sea monster getting beat up by God, the creator of all things, in this apocalyptic hour? Are we on the brink of the beast? Are we on the edge of eternity? Is something biblical going on with the signs of the second coming of Christ? Well, we've got more proof. Turn with me, if you will, to the book of Job, to the 41st chapter, and Job is really down and depressed. I mean, come on. All of his wealth has been stolen. His children were killed in a terrible storm. And he's got the Baghdad boils from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Eat up. He's sitting in sackcloth and ashes, praying to God. And even his wife said, why don't you just curse God and die? Three of his best friends came over, stared at him for seven days and nights, never spoke a word in his agony, and then accused him of sinning. He's not in a good mood. And he begins to complain to the Lord, and the Lord begins to speak to him. And this is what the Lord says in Job 41. Canest thou draw out Lathiathan with a hook, or his tongue with a cord, which thou lettest down? Canest thou put a hook into his nose, 
or bore his jaw through with a thorn? Will he make many supplications unto thee? Will he speak soft words unto thee? Will he make a covenant with thee? Will thou take him for a servant forever? Will thou play with him as with a bird? Or will thou bind him for thy maidens? Shall the companions make a banquet of him? Shall they part him among the merchants? Canst thou fill his skin with barbed irons or his head with fish spears? Do you, in other words, God's saying, listen, Job, I can go into the depths of the sea anytime I want to. I can stick a hook in the jaw of Leviathan. I can play with him like a little bird. I could wrap a cord around his tongue and pull it out. I could drive a thorn through his jawbone and shut his mouth. I could tear him into pieces and feed him on a banquet table. Or I could make him speak soft words to me. I am God. So who are you to question me? So folks, let me just say something. When the Lord is talking about Leviathan here in Job 41, he's not making it up. There is a sea monster there is dragons in the bottom of the ocean. They are demonic. They are of Lucifer. And they are against the children of the world, against the children of God. Job writes about it here in Job 41. David writes about it in Psalm 74. And Pastor Begley's talking about it on a YouTube video. And why is it, why am I even discussing it? Because something happened. An eyeball. This is not the eyeball of an octopus. This is not the eyeball of a whale. This is not the eyeball of, of a squid. Not unless something, I don't have no idea. But scientists immediately know this doesn't, this does not match any of those. This is some type of an eye the size of a softball fresh, plucked up out of the sea from a species that man, scientists don't even have a clue what it is. They don't know why the 5,000 blackbirds fell out of the sky in B.B. Arkansas on New Year's Eve just before the stroke of midnight. Not one New Year's Eve, but two New Year's Eves in a row. They, don't, they do not know why two million fish washed up on the banks of Redondo Beach, Cal I mean, of Chesapeake Bay. They do not know why 212 cows fell dead in Stockton, Wisconsin. They don't know why 7 million fish wash up on the banks of Redondo Beach, California. Or why 7,000 buffalo fell dead in three days in Vietnam. Or why 7,000 bald eagles gathered in a landfill in Vancouver, Canada and ate the carcasses of dead rats. They don't know why the sun flares have increased. And why there's a comet coming, bright, so bright, it will be brighter than the greatest star of Bethlehem when Christ first came to the world. They don't know why the rivers are turning blood red in the Texas lake, or the, or the rivers in Memphis, Tennessee, or the Beirut River in Lebanon, or why it rained blood red rain in India, or why did the Sea of Azov turn blood red along the coast of Russia and Ukraine? Why did the tourist waters turn blood red in France? Why did the Yangtze River turn blood red in China? Why is the Mississippi River running dry? Why is the Nile River running dry? Something biblical is going on. Why is the Middle East, the Arab Spring, has become the dark winter? Something's happening. And I'm going to tell you something. God's not playing. He's bringing salvation. Do you see what he said? I'll bring salvation. I'll pluck the eye. I'll drive a hook in his jaw if I have to. I'll tear him into pieces. I'll even wrap a cord around his tongue. I've got all power. He doesn't say he'll pluck the eye, but if you tear someone's head into pieces, the eyeball's going to go flo floating somewhere. Are you saved? See, these are signs of the apocalypse. These are signs of the apocalypse. Not the Mayan calendar, but biblical signs spoken of in the Word of God. Give your life to Jesus Christ. I want to help you. You can just, look, if you would just call upon the name of the Lord and repent of your sins and ask Jesus into your heart, he'll save you. He'll wash you with his precious blood that he gave on the cross of Calvary. And he rose from the dead to give you victory. He's not in the grave anymore. He's alive and he's coming back soon. Please give your life to Jesus Christ.